the poor. Why don't you invite the main and the lame and the blind? Why don't you invite some unemployed folk who come in and just eat up all the food? Drink up everything you got to drink. And then ask you, is there anything else left you got? You got any food stamps? Can we go to Walmart? They just want like all. Invite somebody that you know don't deserve to be on your guest list. And give to them because God loves the hilarious giver. And those who give to the poor, the Bible says they're giving to God. They're investing with God. He said, if you do that, then you're going to be repaid. You're going to be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. You see, kingdom citizens not only are compassionate and humble, but they are also generous. And they give to the poor, not expecting anything in return. And they wait, and they're patient. They believe that God will repay. And God may not repay at the end of every day, but in the end, God pays. God will recompense. God will reconcile the books. God will always balance the books. He will never be indebted to anyone. He will always pay. I had a humbling experience the other day. I have them all the time, you know. I had a humbling experience, lest I think I'm a big shot, just because I get invited with the big shots. I know I'm a little shot. I'm no big shot. And my bank account testifies to that, you see. And so I get invited, and I go up to the state capitol. They invite me up all the time to come and testify and, and so forth and so on. So I'm up there talking, and so we come into this room, and they got all of this candy. I mean, they got baskets full of preacher. Baskets full of candy in this particular office. Now I just assume. I just, just assume, you know, people around here work where they know I, I don't eat much during the day because it slows me down. So I just don't like to eat during the day. I just assume that that's for the guests. And so I take a little old bag of peanuts with raisins in it, which I like. And I go into the meeting while the people are talking. It's 3 o'clock. I haven't eaten anything all day. And so I'm eating. I'm just listening. And so on the way out, I'm going to pick up my grandson. I say, well, he like these M&Ms. <laughs> they got about, it's at least 150, Brother Green, at least 150 bag of M&Ms in this basket. I picked up one, one pack of M&Ms with peanuts. And there's a room full of people. And I'm getting ready to go out the door. And the woman says to me, Reverend Watts, That's not for you. That candy is for those people who are coming in this office to be in meetings in that room. I almost cursed. <laughs> but I didn't. I gave it up a long time ago, but I didn't. But my blood pressure went from about 115 over 65 to at least 300 over 200. But I took a real deep breath. I mean, I probably almost exploded my lungs. I, I breathed in so deeply. And it was totally quiet in that room. And I stuck my hand in my pocket. And I turned around, I walked back, and I took out a $5 bill. And I laid it down. I said, I am so sorry. I did not know that that candy was reserved for the politically elite. Please excuse me. And I believe that this will take care of the two bags, of, a bag of peanuts and M&Ms I ate today and the bag that Bob Hardy ate yesterday. <laughs> and I said, now consider me excused. I was reminded, <coughs> I'm not no big shot. They, they might put my articles in the Charleston Gazette because they ain't got nothing else to put in there, that's why. And they might call me to interview me on TV because they ain't got nobody else to talk to. But every now and then, they will remind me over a bag of peanuts and a pack of M&Ms. I'm really not in that elite group of folk that can eat the peanuts and the M&Ms. And I accept that. Because I went out there thinking, for $5, I could have bought me a couple of bags of M&Ms and peanuts. <laughs> and just kind of run in my briefcase. There was nothing special about those, you see. You're reminded of who you are by the grace of God. But he says the kingdom citizen is compassionate, humble, and generous because the kingdom citizen believes that God is going to pay back 
All those things that we do in secret to people who cannot pay us back. God will pay us back. I was up there with Brother Glenn Walker. And men around Glenn just kind of lift your spirit. He just lifts your spirits, man. He just lifts my spirit. I was just, just feeling real good just being with him and meeting with people. He had me giving presentations to folk and talking to different people. So when we finished the, this meeting, I had these books, my brother-in-law's and my sister's books that I carry around and telling people, y'all need to use this in your program. And uh, talks my father never had with me and talks my mother never had with me. And so I just said, look, just, just take the books. And I, I gave away about $200 worth of books. And I said, the spirit of Mother Phyllis Tolliver and Tom Tolliver come on me. What's wrong with me? I, think, I, I got in my car I was coming by. I got to get in with $200 worth of books. And now I got to go and pay for them. Because they keep an inventory of the books. Just for a moment, though, I forgot who I was. I thought I was Phyllis Tolliver. I thought I was Tom Tolliver. I thought I was Ben Tolliver. Giving generous and kind people. But God will repay God will repay every time we do something to help someone for the right motive. Not that we're trying to bribe someone. We're just doing it so we're trying to help. God will recompense. God will repay. A kingdom citizen understands that. A few more minutes and I'll be through. Now here comes the big idea. The first 14 verses builds up to the last 15 or the last nine verses. So in verse 15, after addressing the guy who would invite him to the dinner and told the guy, you got the wrong guest list. Everybody on this list are people who can pay you back. Even me, because you know I can multiply bread and fish. So you know I can pay you back. And everybody else you've invited can pay you back. When are you going to give to someone just because you can do it and because you're trying to affirm their dignity and be a blessing to them? So now somebody was eavesdropping. Verse 15, and one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, and he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he made a rude, crude miscalculation. He just assumed because he was there with Jesus that he was going to be in the kingdom. So he says, blessed is everybody who's going to eat bread in the kingdom of God. Oh, how blessed we're going to be. You know what they say when you assume, don't you? So he makes this great assumption that he is going to be in the kingdom of God just because he's been going to church and paying some tithes and offerings. So now Jesus got to speak to him. Verse 16, then he said to him, because Jesus knows that the man who makes the statement, he's not only speaking for himself, there are others in that group who, who, who subscribe to that same belief. They believe that they're going to be in the kingdom. So now Jesus speaks to him specifically and to the rest of the group generally. Now watch this. He said to them, a certain man gave a great supper, and he invited anybody. So we have a parable of the great supper. The invitations are extended in this text. The context is the invitations are extended to the entire Jewish nation because Jesus in this parable is the certain man, and he's the one who is having this great big party, this great banquet supper, and he sends out all of these invitations. Just as my, sister, my, mother, my, my wife and her cousin did for her cousin's parent. Send all these invitations. And to their amazement, and in the text, to the man's amazement, when people were supposed to RSVP, they sent back an excuse. Now watch this. Verse 18, but they all with one accord began to make excuses. And the first one said, I'm sorry, I'm in the real estate. I just bought a piece of ground. I must go and see it. Please consider me excused. Now Jesus often in parables would use hyperbole, right? Gross exaggeration. To show how ridiculous excuses can be. Who in their right mind would buy a piece of property without seeing it first? So this guy says, look, I bought the property. I haven't looked at it yet. I got to go look at the property. I've already closed on and paid the money for it. So please, just consider me excused. A flimsy excuse. The second person, RSVP, he says, look, I just bought five yoke of oxen. That's a major investment to buy five yoke of oxen. But I haven't tried them out yet. I just bought an Escalade. I just bought my new road, uh, a road, road ranger. 